Hey y'all, in this video, we are going to be doing a data quality report. We're gonna talk about the best business practices around data quality reporting. We'll start with a business requirement. We'll understand what the business needs from us and talk a little bit about that. We will then create a view and inside that view, we will name a test field. We will add a case statement. Then we will talk about naming conventions for saving the view. We will follow up at the end with testing. How do you do positive, negative testing? And with that, let's get to work. Let's start with the business requirement. And this is the why behind all data quality reporting. I'm gonna give you a real story from a client many years ago, but we went live with SAP. They were supposed to be putting in new products, creating the bombs, routings, production versions for these products because they're producing products. Well, one night, uh, right after go live, we had someone, um, and I'm sure it wasn't deliberate, but somebody missed a production version. On the line, they were unable to release the production order from the SAP system. That line was down for two hours at $70,000 an hour cost to that plant. That's why data quality is reporting, and that's why it's going to be important for us to understand the business requirements for any report that we're right. In this example, we're just going to take a product and we're going to compare it to production version table. We're going to see if all of the products have production versions. And it's a little more complicated than that in real life. But for this example, we're going to keep it simple. And that will be the business requirement. Now that we have our business requirement and we understand what the business is looking for, which is a list of products that all have production versions, we are going to create a view in SQL Server. So I'm already in SQL Server and I'm just gonna hit new view. And the first thing I wanna do is just get the products listed out here. So let's grab the key fields that I want, which are product ID, name, and product number, and run that. Well, you can see we have 295 records. So the test is gonna be, do we have 295 production versions that go with these products? Well, I have another table out in the system called production version and I'm going to put that in there and as you can see it just has two fields now again real life there's going to be more fields than that like in an SAP system or Oracle system or whatever you're working in but for example again I just want to keep it um, keep it clean keep it simple so I'm going to actually do the join from product ID to product ID now when I join this because of the way an inner join works if there are 295 matches, we will get a record count still of 295. Guess what? We still have 295, which means in this case, we have a good, uh, we have good data. All of the production versions are created. However, what we want to do though, is we're going to set this up for what if we don't, and we also want to set it up for a scoring system like information steward or tableau or some sort of uh, b some other bi system right so we're actually going to add a column in here a a test column or a test field column we're going to say case oops got to do it right case when boy struggle is real case when production version dot production we'll just say product ID product ID is null then it's going to be a fail else it's going to be a pass and and then we'll call this test now the reason that we call it test and I would suggest highly suggest that you call your test field test or Z test or something that's consistent across all of your data quality reports. That way, whenever you're putting this against a system like Information Steward or Tableau, you know exactly what field is going to be scored. And I like to do it this way with a case statement rather than trying to do any type of um, logic over on the scorecard side be, so that I can control all the logic with SQL. So in this case, if we look down the test area or the test column, we have all passes. Now, what about fails? Well, this is part of a best practice that I would highly suggest that you do as well. And that is that if you don't have any fails, don't just trust your logic do something inside the system. In other words, manipulate the data so that you get a fail. 
And if you have to do that uh, in a, you know, a local SQL server or something like that to test your logic, then by all means do that. Uh, sometimes you can't do it. Like let's say you're in Google cloud platform, you have read only access. Well, fine. Bring some sample data into a SQL server, then do the test over there. Make sure you have your positive and so you want your pass and fail. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into my production version table and I'm going to go into edit and I'm going to delete one of the production versions. As a matter of fact, I'll just delete the first one, P-980 uh, and hit delete. And now when I run this, excuse me, when I run this, I should get a fail on P-980. So I'm going to run this. I see pass, 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 pass. I'm not seeing fail. So did I do something wrong? So let's see. Uh, the best way to do this is actually we can filter on fail and let's take a look. All right, I did something wrong. Well, guess what? I did the outer join wrong. So you can't get a fail if you don't have an outer join. So this was a great example of my logic was wrong. And I wanted to show you that because you can get, it looks like everything's going good. You don't have any errors, but your logic is wrong. I did an inner join instead of an outer join. And to be able to capture something that's missing between two data sets, I have to do an outer join. So that's why I didn't get any fails. Now, if I come back here and I pull this off, we should see all the pails and all the fa pails, uh, that's a good one, all the passes, and if there's a fail, it should be in there too, which is right there is the fail. So that'll score, it'll be you know basically 294 passes over um, 295 total records, so it's gonna be 99.99 something percent of a pass rate, and the business will get this fail report to say, hey, you need to go fix this record. Now, let's talk a little bit about naming conventions. We talked a little bit about the alias field for the test column called calling something consistent. What you wanna do for your naming convention on your views is you wanna come up with some way to organize these things. So many of the projects I work on have hundreds if not thousands of views and you wanna be able to find them. So you might wanna do something like DQ underscore to separate the data quality views out from all the other views that are in your repository. And what we like to do is like DQ underscore, and then we do something like the main functional area, like product, vendor, customer, and then underscore whatever else is going on. Uh, I would shy away from putting the actual criteria inside of the name because that criteria will change on you. The biz, I guarantee the business will change the requirements from time to time and then you'll have to rename your views and so on and so forth. So I'll try to stick to something about the tables, the fields, the functional area. So what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm just gonna name this DQ underscore and we'll call it product and production version version and I'm gonna give it an underscore V so that we know that it's a view. I'm gonna hit okay. And now we have a data quality report. Look, I hope this is helpful. And if it is, I wanna just really encourage you to subscribe to the channel because I'm actually going to be in the near future creating a data quality system from start to finish. We'll start with the data quality report. We'll go all the way to a Tableau dashboard with some uh, charts and fail data, so on and so forth. Have a great day.